I have to ask, have you, yes, you've been trying to figure out if HubSpot Enterprise Hub is a right fit for your company? Then make sure you watch this entire playlist dedicated to answering that exact question. Yes, we're on a mission. Is HubSpot Enterprise right for you? In this specific video, we're gonna talk about ABM, or for us laymen, account-based marketing, and the new thoughts and features in the HubSpot Enterprise Hub with our friend, that's right, Coming back again, Nicholas Holland. Now, if you didn't know, Nicholas Holland is the GM of Marketing Hub and VP of Product for HubSpot, and he's super passionate about the success of companies like yours and what they can get, the ROI, when using the HubSpot tools. With all of that out of the way and now said, let's get into the good stuff. Are you a HubSpot user looking for fun and interactive education that helps you be better at HubSpot? Then welcome to Sprocket Talk. That's right. It's your boy George B. Thomas from SprocketTalk.com bringing yet another HubSpot educational video. If you're a sales, marketing, or service professional, or just somebody who's really cool and you're looking to learn more about HubSpot and inbound strategies to help your business grow, then guess what? Well, you're in the right spot. Now, recently I got a chance to sit down with Nicholas Holland and ask him a ton, yes, a ton of questions around the HubSpot Enterprise Hub. One of those questions was about account-based marketing, and this is what he had to say. So I will fully admit, I've been one of the detractors of account-based marketing inside of HubSpot. I've been the killer of fun. Uh, and, you know, it took me a while to get comfortable bringing ads into HubSpot. You know, I care deeply about inbound. And the reason why is that I used to be a bad marketer. Boy, I would buy a list. I'd hire people in foreign countries to scrape. I would basically, I'd go to, a, I'd be the one, not quite, but, you know, I'd, I'd give you a mental image. I'd be the one that takes the fishbowl at the actual event just so I had more leads. And that sucks that's not good that that literally ruins it that's why we joke marketers can't have anything nice we ruin it for everybody else and so whenever i found hubspot i felt very inspired which is there is a path to be a good marketer there is a path to give value before you get value so with ads and i'm giving this as a backstory to abm with ads effectively i was like i don't want pop-ups and interstitials and pre-rolls these things are like time burglars they steal time and you'll still see in our ads product, I don't allow only a certain type of ads to come into HubSpot. I very much like uh, the lead ads and the lead gen ads from Facebook and from, uh, from LinkedIn. I very much like pay-per-click ads because data has shown that people trust pay-per-click ads more than they trust often the search results. These are all things where people are actively looking for something and they get that. Uh, and then like social media, you're actively looking for engaging content. You're looking to be entertained. So ads work there. So with ABM, what I struggled with for the longest time is, is you aren't doing any sort of broad based marketing. You are starting off with a defined account set. And for many of the people who marketers who are here analyzing your business, the easiest way to understand if ABM is for you is, uh, if the world is your oyster, then you're not in ABM. That's very much like a sell to anybody. As you begin to kind of define your market more and more, if it starts to get to the point where it's small, and I would say small would be under 500 total businesses in the world that can buy from you. Now you're starting to get into something called an account-based marketing approach. A lot of people don't like the term ABM anymore because you really can't pull off ABM without a joint effort with your sales team. So people are calling it ABX, ABG. We are talking about it as ABM to the market, but you'll notice inside of HubSpot, it's not actually called ABM. It's called target account. So now here you are, you have defined a set of target accounts you want to work with, whether it's an industry list of 500, I can only work with these people, or your sales leader says, these are the 100 I want you to focus on. Now, the part that's hard uh, for me still to this day is that many companies do a lot of things that they don't like to talk about. I have, I have fun with partners in our ecosystem. I pick on them all the time. I say, how'd you get that original list? How'd you get that original contact? No one wants to talk about that. And I still think that's an area where I would just encourage all your listeners, be a good person. Because at the end of the day, if you can't give me a straightforward answer as to how you got that lead, you didn't attract them via content, you didn't get them to come to one of your events, you didn't inbound them, then you started off the machine less than optimal. But moving on, once you do that, 
what you then move into is you are saying, this is a target set of accounts, whether it's this moment in time, or this is my stuff that I want to go through. And when you have a set of target accounts, it's a subset of your broader accounts. So the first thing we did is inside of HubSpot is we made a defined property called target account. And this allows you now where you may have a corporate sales team that works on target accounts and you may have a mid market or a small business that works on the world. The next thing we did is we gave you a, again, these are system properties because uh, Halligan asked me one time, he was like, Could, couldn't you always do this ABM stuff in HubSpot? And the point is you could hack it together. But by making these things blessed on high by the product team, all this stuff comes naturally out of the box now. So with the target account stuff, now what's cool is that now you can start to say, of my target accounts, which of these kind of match my ideal customer profile? So to give you an example again, I've got, I work with banks and there are 500 banks that I want to target. And cause I'm on the banking team, this happens all the time. I'm on the banking sales team and marketing team. I've got my friends over here who do something like uh, uh, financial uh, planners. That's their team, minor banks. So I've defined banks. Now inside of banks, community banks are my best. Rural community banks are my best. I love those. I win all the time. I never win hardly ever on banks that are sitting in downtown metropolitan area you can begin to define your ideal customer profile so what that means is you can begin to rank those kind of and what we, in our examples we give is like one through four icp one through four and we've got templates now that we release in marketing enterprise that let you go through and define those and what i mean by templates like workflow templates you can go in there you can go in there and tell a workflow to analyze everything in a list and to categorize it one through four. So you could have custom properties on there as is downtown, yes or no, uh, number of miles located to metropolitan area, size of the bank in terms of revenue. We don't work with banks over a billion. We do work with banks that are half a million or half a billion. Um, so what's cool is now right out of the box, HubSpot lets you do target accounts, right, right out of the box, HubSpot lets you basically start to have workflows that now categorize those. Then, what starts to get cool is now that you're doing ideal customer profiles, the next thing that you can do is you want to go in there and score those. We've always had contact scoring. And then this last year, a lot of people were really happy that we uh, put in uh, a lot more robustness into our manual contact scoring. So you can say this contact is more likely to buy than this next one. This is how you help salespeople uh, in terms of uh, giving them, you know, turning up those sides. The more you tell the salesperson to block that marble and take that marble, that's really what company scoring comes down to. Uh, effectively, now we have company scoring that's in there, and that's a big deal now. So your your target you you set target accounts. Now you've basically categorized them into different ideal customer profiles, and now you're able to basically score those based off interactions, and it's negative and positive scoring. So you have something where somebody is engaging with content, the score is going up. You have something where uh, somebody has uh, unsubscribed, score goes down. Well, what this does is gives your sales team now a signal whenever they're in there working leads. The last part that we've done is that we've added, again, another system property called buyer roles. And buyer roles are really fascinating because you guys know a lot of times whenever you're doing B2B sales, very rarely, and man, people will tell you this all the time, you, you know, kind of sales 101 is that say, George, I'm going to sell to uh, Impulse. Are you the decision maker? And a lot of times people say, yeah, yes, I'm the, I can make this decision right now if I wanted to. But we all know, of course, especially if we're married, married, every guy that says that still has to go back and consult with his wife to make sure that it gets done. And so buyer roles are very, very important. You need to know who is the decision maker, but you also have to know who the, the uh, influencers are. You also have to know sometimes in larger companies who actually pays the bill because you actually have a person who's a point of contact, you have a decision maker, you have an influencer, you have somebody who is actually the buyer themselves, and you also are able to start doing who are detractors. It's pretty cool. So now you can start to set these buyer roles. And I've already started to see people getting into advanced stuff, which is, let's say that now always, you know, we do HubSpot uh, has a really cool CMS, we've been promoting and, and we'll promote more in the future. Do you know who a detractor is all the time on the CMS? The IT guy. 
So you can go set up a buyer's role called the IT guy because they care about things that are wildly different than the marketer, wildly different than the developer. And they sit quietly until they go back and have their powwow and they go, well, I didn't see that they had reverse proxy CDN support. So we're not hiring them. And you didn't even know. You didn't even know. So with the buyer roles, what becomes really cool is that you can now have your sales team hunt for who those different buyers are. Cause you know, there's an IT person in every org. And then the marketer now has a really cool set of things right out of the box that they can start to do. When you're doing ads, you have audiences already built in to go and say, I only want to take my ads and show them to my target accounts. Now you're saving money. I only want to basically show those to my ICPs that are the highest rank. Now you're ready to get in there and rub elbows with your competitor. Cause you know, those are your basic, uh, ones that you really want to go for. So you'll spend a lot of money on those guys versus the very vanilla marketing strategy of like, let's just spend money for this giant group, this giant CPC. So now you're in there mixing it up and you starting to get leads in there. So once you're now getting those leads in there, now you've got, you're starting to send out your marketing materials and you only want to do an offer, whether it's a free consultation, it's a, uh, uh, come on site and do an evaluation. It's uh, whatever. It's a procedure that's free. You only want to do that for the ones that are scored really high because people are engaged. And then you move down one other level, which is now you've actually, as the sales team starts, it's like, oh man, I found George's IT guy, Jimmy. And so you're like, okay, I got Jimmy's number. So you say, why do we lose? And they say, well, they always think we don't do, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, we don't have any sort of like uh, security controls. So you set up an entire nurturing sequence to drive security points home. And the IT guy is getting his messaging now, whether it's bots on the site, whether it's email that's coming through there, et cetera, to ads, and you're still able to nurture everybody else. And what's cool about everything I just described is that's available out of the box. So to take it all the way home, yes, you could have set a custom property for target account. You could have set a custom property for buyer role. You could have done all that. And people did kind of hack that together. But the problem is it didn't flow through to reporting. You couldn't go in and see a dashboard that showed you everything about your target accounts. You couldn't go in there and see how much revenue. Now we're back to multi-touch revenue. How much revenue am I getting from my target account versus not from my ICPs and all that stuff. And so it really all comes together in this beautiful crescendo, which is if you have complex selling of a small defined market, then that's why I finally came around and said, this is a legitimate, I still think there's a lot of questions around where people get their original list, but I am very clear that at the end of the day, this is a legitimate marketing strategy that people were really suffering by having to hack this together. And I'm super excited that we're providing it out of the box. Account-based marketing, is it something that could help your business grow better? If the answer to that question is yes, then it just might be time to check out HubSpot Enterprise Hub for your company's sales, marketing, and service success. Make sure you stick around for the next video where we talk about adaptive testing and the exciting updates in HubSpot Enterprise Hub. Hey, did you like this video? Then head over to sprockettalk.com for more actionable and tactical HubSpot user videos, tools, and other resources. Make sure you hit the subscribe as well for those instant notifications and so that we know that you're part of the Sprocket Talk community and maybe hit the bell too. Until next time, make sure you're focused on being a happy, helpful, humble human. And as always, make sure you're doing some happy HubSpotting.